With more on the Iraq crisis, we're joined now by Kate Gould. She's a lobbyist on Middle East policy for the Friends Committee on National Legislation. That's a peace advocacy group. Let me start by uh, asking, you spent a lot of time in the Middle East, obviously you have an understanding of Iraq. If you were to sit down and kind of describe all the ramifications, what's at play here, mm -hmm. how would you describe it to somebody who's just coming in and trying to get an understanding of what's at play? We're seeing Iraq erupt along the very same fault lines that were set in place with the U.S. invasion and occupation in 2003. So it's important to remember that all the Shia-Sunni conflict that you're referring to, I mean, this is a, a relatively new phenomenon in the kind of um, explosions that we're seeing in Iraq today. That when the U.S. came in and invaded Iraq, they put in place a government chosen along sectarian lines. This was the first time in Iraq's contemporary history that a government was chosen strictly along sectarian lines, and now we're seeing those uh, sectarian divisions continue to be exacerbated um, by and, and exploited by groups like ISIS. So it's, it's, it's definitely a result of long-term military intervention by the U.S. and by uh, other countries in the region, and that's what's ripping apart uh, Iraq today. So that's, that's why it's so important in order to resolve this issue to get all those players to come to the table and look at a political settlement, both with the internal factions fighting in Iraq, but also the external factions, because a lot of what's going on is a proxy war. John uh, Kerry today sounded more like John Lennon, come together, uh, which is a great message but it's a message sure. that Washington's been sending in that direction for a long time. The Iraqi prime ministers ignored it up to this point, obviously. And this seems to be, and I want to get your thoughts on this because you're up on the Hill quite a bit. Is there a Pollyanna aspect to U.S. foreign policy in the sense that we'll export democracy? And yet you see what's happening in Iraq where it's not inclusive. Uh, it, when it came to Egypt where there was a mm -hmm. democracy, an election, Mohammed Morsi also accused of not being inclusive um, and it also tends to drive these wedges and drive a lot of the problems that are going on. Wouldn't you agree? I would agree that it, what Kerry's calling for as far as an inclusive government, this is essential in order to gain a political settlement in Iraq. It's essential to stopping the violence. But unfortunately, U.S. policy has often contradicted um, that, that rhetoric about inclusiveness. And so at the same time as Kerry is is calling on the Maliki government to include more of these factions. We've seen the U.S. actually backing the Maliki government with arms and uh, military aid when, and backing the Iraqi security forces, which have become yet another sectarian militia that is tearing Iraq apart. So it's, it's a matter of matching rhetoric and action, in this case, uh, with U.S. policy, in order to actually get the kind of um, the inclusive settlement that Kerry's calling for. Let me talk to you about... Uh the current vice president, Joe Biden, back in the 2006, he was a senator from Delaware, and he floated the idea of partition, that the Kurds might be in one area, the Shiites in another, the Sunnis in another, with a strong central government. And a lot of people are floating that idea again now. Is that a good idea or not? Iraq has been torn apart by these uh, external military, external countries that have decided to um, to sector Iraq along sectarian lines. So from colonial days um, and onward until today, and that has only made things worse. So we saw the formation of this coalition um, occupation government based along sectarian lines. And previous to that, it's important to recognize that um, Iraq had very mixed, diverse communities. Iraq's uh, Sunni Shia and Kurds live together in many different parts of the country, and that's why the ethnic cleansing that tore Iraq apart uh, was so severe. So we, we don't need the U.S. calling for more sectarian divisions. What we need is for the U.S. supporting, calling for, and also uh, backing up with its policies more inclusive and um, you know, reconciliatory positions for an inclusive government. All right, Kate Cool. thanks so much for coming in, sharing your observations. Certainly appreciate it. And that, of course, brings us to our